Today's video sponsor is Skillshare. Thank you for supporting the channel. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if you're new here. I'm Kirsten, but you can call me K. Yes, the letter, and I am a 2021 grad from UNC Chapel Hill. Go Hills and go Michael Jordan. I graduated with a BS in chemistry, a concentration in biochemistry, so I really went through it and I went through it with an iPad. So my first two years, I was a traditional pen to paper student, tons of notebooks, pens, index cards, textbooks, lab notebooks, and a really not so great Windows touchscreen laptop and all of that. My last two years, I used an iPad Pro and a MacBook Pro, but I used my iPad a lot more and with the school season back in full swing, I wanted to share the apps I used on my iPad for college and in general, what and how I used my iPad as a student. So the first obvious way I used my iPad is to take notes. I loved taking notes on my iPad more than I did on paper because I had infinite stationery and it was so easy to pull in these complicated diagrams and pictures from the textbook than trying to redraw them or waste time printing them out to add to my notebooks. I used the GoodNotes 4 app for note taking at first and then GoodNotes 5 came out and 4 was kind of like discontinued the five is tons better anyhow. I specifically liked taking notes on the graph paper template and then if I wanted to print those notes or if I just wanted my digital notes to look cleaner, it was super easy for me to change the paper template to a blank white option. I had GoodNotes 5 on my laptop as well and so whenever I was in class or taking an open book exam, which happened like once, it was so easy to search up my handwritten notes. Before in lecture, I would legit be flipping through like my enormous five subject notebook and would ultimately never find that exact page where I wrote down that one obscure thing that the professor is now asking about. When I would take notes like this in the GoodNotes 5 app, it was mainly as a review or a recap or to see how long or how detailed I could write notes on the topic without referring to the professor's PowerPoint. This is what I did most as a college student was import these 100 to 200 page slide PowerPoints these professors had, and then I could annotate them directly. And it was so easy to download and import the slides within a few seconds of class starting, when before I often had to take random notes during lecture on a piece of paper, if the slides weren't uploaded at the time, or use all of my printer money to print out these ridiculously long PowerPoint slides. I could also circle and write down whatever I needed to on the diagram within the slides. And specifically as a chemistry major, this was so important since my whole college career are these crazy shapes. At UNC, if you're a BS chem major, you take a ton of math, like almost enough to get a minor in it, and also a lot of physics, which is basically more math. I'm personally the type that has to see every step written out and write down those steps myself. So I accumulated tons of scrap paper as a traditional student, but the second I have my iPad, having 20 digital pages as I'm trying to work out a physics problem or a differential equation didn't feel as wasteful. It was just easier to keep up with compared to 20 physical pages for just one problem. I also always used iCloud Drive and Google Drive to access my files. So you can set it up to where your work and notes backs up to the drives and it's readily available at any time on any device. This made things a lot easier on me when classes started transitioning online and remote due to the pandemic. And it's just kind of nice not having to fight for a cute notebook or those good pens in the stationary aisle during back to school season. And it's especially worse at the college bookstore. I also used basically the entire Microsoft suite on my iPad and also had it to where those files backed up as well so I could access them anywhere too. So I used Microsoft OneNote the most. This was actually because it was mandatory for one of my lab classes and served as our lab notebook, but I enjoyed using OneNote the most on my iPad compared to the computer. It was a very similar experience as far as note taking where I could annotate the slides directly that were in OneNote and later if I needed to I could type up reports or anything in that app as well. I also used Microsoft Word a ton for typing up lab reports and responding to question packets that I had in the biology classes I took. For classes like that I really just needed to be able to type, I wasn't doing anything super fancy and it worked out really well for me and the experience felt the same using Word on the iPad as it does for me on the desktop personally. Another app I used pretty often was Quizlet. It was just a really simple flashcard app. I've been using Quizlet literally since I was in middle school and I used it here and there for classes in college too. I obviously use it most for my memorization based classes, so it was really helpful in my Latin language classes as well as anatomy and when I was working on my EMT certification. 
I used it on my phone while on the bus between classes and my apartment and on my iPad when I was studying for exams. This might be a more niche app depending on what your lectures require, but another app I used on my iPad all the time was Poll Everywhere. I used Clickers for the first two years of university and professors and TAs slowly transitioned to using Poll Everywhere, especially once classes started going online. It's basically a more mature version of Kahoot if we're being honest, but it is a great app to look into for any interactive presentations that you might have to give. The last app I wanted to mention that I used throughout my college days was Skillshare, who is so kindly sponsoring today's video, but even if they weren't, just to let you in on a little secret, I'd still be including them on this list. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators where you can explore new skills, deepen your existing passions, and just get lost in creativity. And their app allows you to access your classes on the go. It's curated specifically for learning, so there's no ads, and there are new classes being added every day, so you're bound to find something you enjoy. For the back-to-school season, you'll likely find Ali Abdal's How to Study for Exams, an evidence-based masterclass really helpful. There are so many great takeaways from this class, but one thing I found personally enjoyable about the class is their solution for how to study, regardless of your class type. So it's just a matter of choosing the best way to study for the given material that you're learning. So active recall, spaced repetition, or combinations of those different study methods, which Ollie covers. Of course, there are also very creative classes like video editing, photography, watercolors, and even piano. So if you're trying to sharpen up a hobby of yours, find an escape into something new, or level up what you're already covering in your university classes, Skillshare is a great place to start. I'll also link my Skillshare class on creating digital planners in the description in addition to some of my other favorite classes that I've taken. And if you don't already have a Skillshare membership, you're in luck because the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So those were the apps I used most on my iPad while in college. Nothing super fancy. It really came down to finding a solid note-taking app, a solid storage and backup app for those notes, and then an app where I could memorize or do a bit of active recall for certain classes. Don't forget to check the description to get a free month of a Skillshare membership, another great platform with an app to develop your skills and explore your creativity. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. And if you're new around here, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.